We're going to be playing Wood Elves. Start off going up against the High Elves with a Vanguard build. We have Swift Shiver Shards, and immediately they're going to be firing in onto these Shadow Warriors. Getting in loads of damage, we have uh, some Dragon Princes moving in, and we'll be pulling back with our Dryads to avoid damage there. And then moving in with our Wild Riders to counter charge the Dragon Princes. We're now going to use a Pendulum since the High Elf Infantry has lined up uh, fairly well there. Should take out quite a few units and our Dryads can move in to engage against these uh, Spearmen and Silverin. They should be able to win against Spearmen. They'll usually lose against Silverin. Uh, but in this case, things are going quite well. You can also use the Summon of Dryads to assist here too. And as for our Swift Shiver Shards, we're going to have them focus fire the Dragon Princes. Try and take them out as quickly as possible. We also have the Withering. That will throw directly onto these Dragon Princes to shut them down. They'll be taking a lot of damage from my Swift Shiver Shards. And on the left flank, we are winning fairly well. Things are going uh, good here. The Dragon Princes are dying. But the right flank is a little bit scarier. The Dragon Princes might be able to skirt around the sides. Pressure me. And my archers. So we'll be bringing in our cavalry to support. And some dryads to body block too. Techless is also here. We'll just chase him away with Trichia. And for these dragon princes we can now charge him with our cavalry. Shoot them with the swift shiver shards. And that should be able to take them out. So there we go. Things are going quite well so far. We will have to pull back some of our wild riders on the left flank. Since they are just getting stuck in spears. And they need to be moving in to support the Swift Shiver Shards. So we'll disengage and then bring them over to assist. Looks like that's working out pretty well. And there we go. We've, we've managed to defend our Swift Shivers from getting charged. Meanwhile, all the High Elf Archers are still getting occupied. And uh, since a few of them are starting to rally, we're going to bring in our Glade Riders up and around to charge into the Shadow Warriors and other Archers, just to make sure that they're not firing. That's uh, essentially the win condition for the Isles. And as soon as all their Archers are down, their infantry won't really be able to carry, and their cavalry is basically already gone. Uh, so we should be good. Let's see, we do have another Pendulum that we could throw down. I'll hit this, this uh, unit of silver in with that. And that should be able to, uh, that should be a pretty big swing play. About uh, 400 gold worth of value off that one pendulum. And if they route, that's about 800 gold. Definitely very worth it. And with the Deepwood Scout still alive, they should be able to finish off the rest of the silver and no problem. Double checking to make sure that there's no Dragon Princes about. And I guess we'll we'll save our final summon uh, for a situation where we might need it, probably to uh, to clog up these spearmen. But we'll see if our archers can take them out first. As for our cavalry, we'll pull them back and away from spears, since we want to make sure that our cavalry is available in the late game to clear up targets like these shadow warriors. And, uh, yeah, essentially that. They need to be running down targets, and if they die to Spearmen, then we won't really be able to chase off any units. If the game was closer, it would be very important that, uh, that we are able to do that, but in this case, we have established a fairly nice lead, uh, with really only Techless being the remaining threat. He will be able to chase my Swift Shivers, but he'll take a little bit too much damage to do so. And now that he's re-engaged in combat, we can finish him off with Drycha. He's not uh, an amazing combat lord. So he should go down relatively easily. You can also see the, the huge effectiveness of these Swift Shiver Shards taking out many of the High Elf forces. Just by shooting them in the back and avoiding their shields. So if we look at the actual damage numbers. You can see why the Swift Shiver Shards are so good. 
getting over 1500 damage value on most of them and picking off very key priority targets my cavalry once again didn't do as well they did trade out into the dragon princes so they did about even just uh not exceptionally but they did their job so there we go pretty straightforward game now with the next game loaded up going to be Vetonia versus Dark Elves. We have a heavy cavalry build, loads of trebuchets, and they're going to be focus firing priority targets. Starting off with this Reaper Bolt Thrower. And then after that, uh, as soon as these Witch Elves move up a tiny bit, we'll start focus firing them. And the Black Guard, all very elite troops for the Dark Elves that we have to... Uh, Make sure that we can take out. There are some Scourge Runners here. We'll have to... We're going to try and run them out of ammunition by chasing them with Paladins. Because we can't really chase them with Cavalry. Problem being that Cavalry will generally... Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll take a little bit too much damage from the Bolt Throwers. And... That's, uh, yeah, we definitely don't want to be losing cavalry against against the Dark Elves. We need them to cycle charge their infantry. Although in this case, we don't need cavalry as much in this situation. So here we go. Just continuing to try and burn the ammunition of these Scourge Runners. The Bolt Throwers will take out a few trebuchet models, but we're okay with that. And then our archers will be able to help kill off the infantry. Since we have so many archer units, I think it's fine if we use them to kill the the witch elves that should work out good enough so instead our trebuchets will be focused firing the black guard as soon as we've taken out these uh the the bolt to our crew which has actually just barely managed to stay online it's traded out uh, and killed off one of my trebuchet models and, uh, that's a little bit unfortunate i guess tiny bit of a misplay there and uh to compensate, I'm going to be moving up with my archers to try and catch out the Bolt Thrower crew. It's usually a pretty nice way of actually killing them off. There is a, There are some assassins here. Putting in some pretty good damage onto my hero squad. They'll pull them away to a safer position. And then we're going to continue moving up with the archers to take out the Bolt Thrower. Our paladins will be moving away to get into a safer position and we're leaving our knights in deep reserve they don't really need to go too aggressively now that the bolt thrower is in range of our archers we can focus fire it and then we're going to retreat back as soon as we can there we go bolt thrower crew is down now the trebuchets are going to focus fire the black guard and we're retreating with our peasants and bringing in the cavalry to support against the uh against these scourge runner chariots just to force them to retreat and then it should be a pretty easy game from there there's no cavalry from the dark elves we can mostly cycle charge their troops to death that's going to be the, be the plan a uh, faint chantress has taken a lot of damage though and it looks like the scourge runners will be moving in to get in more damage against my peasants but they overextend just a tiny bit too far and we'll be able to catch out many of their models some witch elves do come in. They may rampage my forces. So we're going to pull back with our cavalry just to make sure that doesn't happen. And we'll shoot at them with our archers to get in a ton of damage on top of them. We can even slow them down with the awakening of the wood. And from here, uh, we're in a pretty nice position. We can actually sort of kite back from the dark elves now. Soul Stealer coming down onto my single entities, but we can split up to avoid most of the damage. Uh, if you do get clipped by it, even if you pull out of the circle, you'll still take the damage. So the Fan Chantress just barely doesn't make it out in time. But she will be taking a lot of damage over there. But she does have a lot of resistances, so it's not too bad. Now, the Scourge Runners have done a lot of damage to our single entities. But the fact that our cavalry is still alive... Uh, should help us out. And we're going to be mostly ignoring Marathi and the rest of the troops until we head into the uh, into the later stages of the game where we can cycle charge them safely without having too many of our troops get murdered. 
The Canine Assassin is a little bit exposed, so we're going to be charging into them with our Paladins. Moving away from the, uh, what's it? Sisters of Slaughter. Since they are white, uh, they will, they will rampage my troops. And uh, we definitely don't want to, that to happen. As you can see here, many our paladins actually getting caught out, which is a little bit of a big misplay. But we should be able to recover as soon as the rampage wears off. Not to mention we also have our peasant bowmen that are able to fire in. We have lost one of our paladins though. But uh, we only really need just the one to win out the game. Uh, one of the real pains here, though, is that we have lost a unit of our uh, multiple units of knights. And uh, that's a lot more painful. But at the very least, we're able to kill off the Sisters of Slaughter. I think that's what they're called. No, Sisters of Singing Doom. We're able to catch the Witch Elves, uh, which is nice. And with the Scourge Runners running out of ammunition, we're going to be feeling a little bit more confident here. Meanwhile, all the troops here. We'll be able to cycle charge with our cavalry and eventually break them off. And the fan chancer should be able to deal with the infantry no problem. Uh, it's really just the scourge runners that we have to protect from. Since they will be able to take out my peasant archers, which are very key to killing off all the infantry of the dark elves. Having the peasants constantly firing in, we'll be able to slowly whittle away even black guard. So keeping them alive is going to be the plan. Uh, in the meantime, we'll continue cycle charging this pocket of troops here. And eventually they should break off. And then uh, and then we should be good. Now this Scourge Runner chariot unit does have a lot of ammunition left. So we're going to turn our archers to focus fire it instead of running away because we really want to take it out. Uh, it will, if, if it was able to use up all of its ammunition, that would be very, very bad. Since uh, we just do not have a whole ton of cavalry to actually uh, to actually continue cycle charging, which is really important for slowing down the forces of the Dark Elf infantry. Another Soul Stealer comes down. We're able to dodge this one a little bit better this time. Uh, but our Paladin is in a little bit of a dicey position. He should be able to disengage, though. And then that should work out just fine. Let's see here. So... Uh, we're just going to be regrouping our forces now, bringing in the trebuchets to reman the artillery if this uh, Dark Elf infantry blob does pull away. We'll be moving in our cavalry to catch the rest of the Scourge Runners. And then uh, I guess we'll be using the Fane Chantress to try and save this paladin. We'll use our cavalry to charge in, use our archers to fire in too, and a big heal. Should be a nice pick-me-up for all of these troops as soon as we disengage just to make sure that we don't uh, we don't lose too many cavalry units and we do manage to save the paladin. Uh, so that's very good. There's no more mobility for the dark elves so now all we have to do is kite them out. We'll be doing that with our archers which still have fairly high ammunition and we're going to pull them out into different directions. Another soul sealer though coming down onto my archers this time. Going to be doing pretty good damage. But uh, these are multi-model units. It's really just a threat for my cavalry. Now we have the uh, trebuchets manned again. We can start shelling the uh, this blob of infantry. And that should work out quite well. Uh, there's not much that they can do to really prevent all the archers from firing. Of course, big spells could go down. But uh, we, we still have too many archers, really. Uh, we have too many archers here for the Dark Elves to really deal with. We can even move in the Fane Chantress just to tap the infantry to get the Mortis Engine effect going. And at this point, we're seeing big routes from many of the Dark Elf troops. Fane Chantress will be able to get a lot of damage on the Black Guard here. And as long as she doesn't take too many hits from Marathi, we should be good. Our cavalry has been waiting on standby to chase off the rest of the troops. And now the Fae Enchantress can safely disengage. Absolutely no problem. So we're now on the stage of the game where it's just the Dark Elf single entities. 
and we've left enough for us to actually clear them out. The Paladin, then move in to snipe out targets, Bay Enchantress, and chase them off too, and we even have Peasant Archers at the ready to, uh, to focus fire them down. I guess we'll shoot them at the Master, since he's a little bit isolated. And at this point, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see if uh, our Peasant Archers can get a little bit of a more optimal firing position. Problem is, uh, the Master was getting knocked around quite a bit, and that did allow him to dodge uh, many of our actual archer shots. So to to better set up for a uh, for a final engagement, we're going to just heal up our troops, bog the heroes down with our peasants. That'll let us get our peasant archers nice and close. And uh, with the combination of the trebuchet giving a leadership debuff, the shot by range units debuff, and a charge from the paladin, that should be enough to get Marathi to route. And if we can achieve that, that's going to be game. Uh, and there we go. Marathi does route off. We can simply escort her off the map with our cavalry. And then it's going to be army losses for our opponent. So there we go. Nice. Uh, a little bit of a dicey game. I did walk into a lot of the AoEs. And took a lot of damage on my cavalry. Uh, but I think we handled the Scourge Runner Chariots well enough. They still got a lot of damage. I could have prevented that better. Especially using Awakening of the Wood to allow my Paladins to catch them. But it didn't really matter in the end. I also had some pretty big misplays focusing the Bolt Thrower with my Trebuchets. It actually didn't get routed off. And it would have been better to just shoot at the Black Guard, I think. Uh, that or the, the Witch Elves. Uh, but there we go. Uh, the single entity squad of the Dark Elves getting defeated by my own single entity squad in the late game. And a pretty straightforward win. Now this next game is going to be Skaven against the Greenskins. A matchup that I would usually ban. And uh, immediately we're seeing some skirmishers in the back with many hidden forces. We could see some fanatics coming around, so that's something that we'll have to worry about. Uh, immediate, I'm just going to rotate my army off the get-go and try and find a position where goblin fanatics won't be able to ambush us. There aren't too many skirmishers on the greenskin side, so uh, just spreading out my troops a tiny bit should be able to cover us. Azag will be long-range spirit leeching my Plague Priest, which is a little bit of an inefficient trade. That doesn't really worry us too much, uh, but we will put him in the forest just to make it a little bit harder for Azag to continue throwing those down. In the meantime, our dogs will be moving about to scout for the enemy, who is quite numerous, and it looks like uh, they're just going to be on the other side of this hill over here so we'll move up our army to get in on top of them our caster will be getting spirit leeched in the meantime but uh we should be able to throw down at least a few spells before he dies out not to mention azag will be getting a uh, hit from overcast damage too and uh he can't really get close enough to our infantry to actually uh avoid that overcasting since we do of course have these rattling guns that's basically all we need. We should be good to go. Our Plague Priest now at half HP. Azag taking minimal damage in the meantime. It looks like for our opponent it's going to be an Orc Shaman. Coming in with another snipe against my caster. We'll dodge him back and forth to try and dodge the missile to the best of his ability. It does hit, but not for a ton of damage. And because of that means that uh, my opponent should be running out of ammunition soon enough. Now, these fanatics will be getting in on top of my troops. Uh, they will likely get a decent amount of damage just hitting my, my Skaven slaves mostly, so actually a fairly good trade for us. And uh, we will be able to kill off many of these stone trolls. We're going to be summoning as much as we can to try and 
uh, get all of our Winds of Magic out before our caster dies. And uh, we're going to be moving up with our Death Glow Bombardiers to hit more, uh, more important targets. As they are... Uh, yeah, the, the Death Glow Bombardiers, they need to be hitting better targets. Uh, we have the Wolf Rats to kill off the remainder of the... Uh, of the... What's it? The Goblin Fanatics. So we're not too worried on that front. And uh, now we can move the Wolf Rats to kill off these Goblin uh, Wolf Riders. Since the counter charge from the Wolf Rats actually do quite a bit of damage. And uh, those guys should be dying pretty quickly. Especially with the terror from our Brood Horrors. That's basically all we need to win this engagement. There are still quite a few Goblins along the flank that we'll have to worry about. Uh, but we do have our Brood Horrors, and with the many of these troops now routing off, uh, we're feeling pretty confident here. Azag 2, in a nice position to get sniped out. Uh, we're going to be turning all of our guns to target fire him, and the slows will make it very hard for him to dodge. After that, uh, he should be going down fairly easily. Uh, at the very least, getting brought down to very low HP. And from there, he'll basically be out of the battle. Our Death Globes will be able to finish off the Stone Trolls. And uh, for this unit of Stone Trolls, we'll be using our Wolf Rats to chase them off. Bringing in another unit of Wolf Rats, splitting them up so that they can cover more ground. And using them to look for other targets to chase out. Uh, these nasty Skulkers do route at the perfect time. That's going to be the target for the Wolf Rats. And in the meantime, our Caster is going to be continuing to summon. He's actually survived quite well since we kept him nice and far away from Azag. And I uh, will likely be able to get all of our Winds of Magic cast, uh, which will be just dandy. In the meantime, Wolf Rats continuing to hit their targets, and we'll be bringing our, in these units to chase off this uh, second unit of Routing Stone Trolls. Just making sure that we're very mobile with them and splitting them up to pick apart the Greenskins. And there we go, it's going to be a pretty clean victory. Uh, pretty clean, quick battle victory against our opponent, uh, Steve. So there we go. Go ahead and save that replay, and I think the Death Glow Bombardiers actually did decently well there. The engagement from my opponent was a little bit uh, mistimed, since we were able to get so many shots with our Rattling Guns. Uh, and things might have gone very differently, but even so, uh, the, the, the Death Glow Bombardiers did just barely pay for themselves in value. Doing better than my Rattling Guns even, but which is pretty cool. As for the Wolf Rats, absolutely amazing. All of them paying for themselves, uh, essentially. And uh, yeah, generally doing really good. Uh, you use them to counter charge any cavalry that sneak by. And uh, from there, Pretty easy win. I might test out this build more in the future. Since if I don't have to ban Greenskins as Skaven, it uh, gives me many more options for tournaments.